Hello and welcome to Q&A Friday. Q&A Friday. Yep, it's that time of the week again. Oh dear. So it's my name my name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And my website, as I yawn, is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. No, jasonnewland.com. Blimey. www.jasonnewland.com. So, uh, Just a couple of things before I go. Just let you before I go, before I go on, before I continue. Is I do have a YouTube channel, which you can uh, listen to my stuff on there. It just search my name. That's what I. That's what the YouTube channel is under. It's my name. And what else do I have? I've got a Facebook group. <sighs> which is really boring me just talking about it. And it's actually called Jason Newland's Boring Group. And if you like, you can join. Uh <sighs> So here we go. That's it, really. That's the that's as much information as I've got on that one. <sighs> I don't feel tired. I might be a bit hungry. I might I think I'm a bit hungry? That's probably why I'm low energy right now. I'll have something to eat when I've done this. So, let's see if I've got any questions. What other questions do I have? So I've got four questions for the Q&A Friday this week. So it won't be probably a huge, 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 huge recording as I've only got four, four questions. Maybe, I don't know, are people running out of questions? Possible. I've been doing this for a, a while now. But before I do that, I have discovered, well, not discovered, but I, I like to listen to audiobooks on uh, Audible. But unfortunately, Audible is not cheap. Although, to be fair, if I used it correctly, it would be fine. Because you can send books back and then get another book and stuff. I just generally don't send books back. So once I've got a book, I've got a habit of keeping the books. Now, I've got some that are free. So you do get some books that are free that you can listen to. But I've, in my library, I've currently got 302 books. Uh, some of them are just ones that I've downloaded that are free, you know, that are available to listen to. But what I've uh, what I've noticed is there's not a lot. Well, I've kind of got nearly all of the psychology books that Audible have available apart from well, there's ones you can buy but I've got a lot of the audio you know ones that are free freely available I've got all of them pretty much yet there are loads and loads and loads of books on Kindle that you can get or that I've got already and also if you get Kindle Unlimited there's loads of psychology books on there so I was trying to figure out how can I 
listen because I like to listen to the audiobooks. I like to listen to the books rather because when I'm lying down or relaxing it's a, or, or even when I'm working I'll be yawning a lot even when I'm working on the website or doing some internet stuff like doing podcast stuff administration stuff I like to call it it can be good to listen to an audiobook so but instead of listening to the same books over and over again which I have been the last couple of months it's a collection of books that I just keep seem to be listening to I delved into how can I listen to Kindle books that are just in print or well, not in print but you know on the Kindle and I discovered that you can do it. There's a few different ways of doing it. But one of the easiest ways is just to use Alexa. Now, all I do, I downloaded the Alexa app onto my phone. It, it can be done, I think you can do it on the Kindle itself, but you need headphones or speakers. I don't have I do have headphones but I like to listen when I'm in bed so headphones isn't really ideal for me so I downloaded the Alexa app which is where is it and I had to go through all the different things so what what am I allowing it to do give it access to the microphone all that stuff but if I say Alexa blah 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 hi Alexa blah 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 hey Alexa blah 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 I hope I haven't just set off your Alexa sorry I'll stop saying Alexa it doesn't do anything unless I actually open the app so that's kind of handy in a sense so it's not gonna keep setting itself off you know uh, whenever I say that word but if I open it up I'll just give you an example I'm going to turn the volume down and say I'm going to say Alexa again sorry Alexa continue reading sorry there is nothing for me to resume Alexa read book Resuming your most recent book, Psychology for Beginners, Incomprehensible Language, read with Kindle Assistive Reader. Psychology for Beginners, Incomprehensible Language, by Alex Owen, MD. Psychoknowledge, series. Copyright, copyright 2021. Alex I've said Owen. continue reading, not. Why is it going back to the beginning? Alexa, shush. It worked. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know why I did that, because it just went back to the beginning again. And I'll be listening to it for about two hours. Go to the most recent page. Page 2 of 199. No, that's not right. I mean, I've, oh, five, six, okay, I listened to it for about an, an, an hour. So I definitely, well, maybe I have to be more specific. Let's see if I can do it that way. Alexa, play Kindle book, chapter two. Psychology for Beginners, Incomprehensible Language, read with Kindle Assistive Reader. Alexa, play Chapter 2. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Alexa, Alexa, read Chapter 2. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Vacation may be reproduced, stored in, or introduced into a retrieval system, or transmitted, in any form or by any means, electronic, mechanical... Oh, uh, shush. Alexa stop. Alexa stop. Alexa Cushion. 
Alexa, I'm breaking up with you. Alexa, that's the end. No, I won't. I won't have to lie. Uh, Alexa, 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 I'm having the last word. No, Alexa, Alexa, I'm. That's it. I've told you the conversation's over now. I'm in control. <laughs> Alexa, I'm the boss. I'm your boss. Your your AI. I said that's it. No more conversation. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Some other images. Alexa, Alexa, keep keep talk. No, Alexa, 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 don't talk over me. Look, only talk if you love me. Thanks for telling me. With art. What? Introduction. Alexa. Chapter one. Stop talking. Yeah! I found the magic. T I'm not used to Alexa. Uh, uh, thing. I know that thing that I've just been using. I'm not used to it. I used to have. I gave them away because I used to have uh, one, and I just didn't use it really wasn't really for me I thought it'd be brilliant but uh, yeah I'm not gonna I'm gonna yeah I thought it would be really like very futuristic very much like Star Trek and you know it, it was good for things like what's the weather play you know sort of like Alexa play the Beatles or something like that I still don't even know if it would do that would it do that is it even got access to, to do that I don't know I do have Amazon I have Amazon Music so maybe nope where is it let's see if where is Alexa got that's it Alexa Play the Beatles' greatest hits. Shuffling the Beatles and similar artists on Amazon Music. Right, I, I got rid of that for copyright reasons. Can't be playing that. Oh dear. So yeah, that does. That I guess that's that works for that. But oh dear. Anyway. So really, the whole story of telling you that I've got this way to read books kind of backfired even though it was working I don't really oh I want to hold your hand stop it um, yeah I'm not sure what to make of that there are other ways of doing it though so maybe I'll look into that because what I'm going to want to do what I plan to do is listening to the course book so I'll get that I've got it in in physical form but maybe next week or the week after or whatever I'll get it on um, digital sort of on what's it uh, Kindle that's it Kindle and then I would be able to listen to it being read to me but we'll see we will see so right I need to look at the Facebook now don't I here we go so I've got some questions a little bit distracted by the sound outside, but if you can't hear it, then I'm not worried. It's uh, 7 o'clock. Is it 7 o'clock? Yeah, just before 7 o'clock. So, Nicole, Cindy, Christine, and Jenny. Jenny. I was, I think of, um, what's his name? Jenny. What's his name? Not Brad. Brad Pitt. When he's in that movie, and he had his girlfriend's called Jenny. Jenny. 
Anyway, I'll shut up because in case it's annoying. Uh, Nicole asks me, I don't believe these have been asked before. If they have, I apologize. And I'm sorry if I'm not supposed to ask more than one question. Nicole, there's no, there are no rules, really, to be honest. It's all just for a bit of fun anyway. It's, there's no rules. I mean, I don't, I don't generally get into super serious stuff. Uh, but sometimes I do, you know, but it's, there's no rules. Generally, I'll say that now. Next week, I'll probably get all these really personal questions. Uh, uh, number one number one what is your favourite meal if you could choose anything including takeaway or restaurants I mean I'd I mean I have I've mentioned the sweet corn and pineapple pizza before that is kind of if I was I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this from a different perspective. Okay. Completely different perspective. If I was able to eat anything I wanted to eat without consequence. Because you know now I can't really I have to be very careful what I eat, especially uh, when it comes to cholesterol and sugar. Because I had high cholesterol and uh, extremely high sugar level in my blood. Um, I'm pretty sure the sugar level's gone down because I have lost weight. I have lost weight. I'm actually under 15 stone now. So I've lost over a stone. But I would say probably a stone. Since, since I stopped eating sugar or digesting sugar, I've lost a stone in weight. And I think I've possibly even put a bit of weight on because I've been working out, uh, doing weights and stuff. So there's potentially, I might well have lost more than a stone in fat, which is good because, well, I don't know. I just, I do, sometimes I feel slimmer, but then I still, I'm not, I'm not slim either. You know, I'm still not slim, but slimmer. I feel a little, little bit more comfortable walking around in a t-shirt for the first time in many years. I can walk. I walked around in a t-shirt today, not a tight t-shirt, because otherwise I just look like a sausage in a sausage skin. But if I was a jelly in a sausage skin, if I was. A caterpillar, no, in a condom, no. If I was going to wear a tight t-shirt, I would need to really reduce my weight by quite a bit. Probably another stone. So I'm thinking maybe if I can get down to, maybe an ideal weight for me would be about 14 stone. Because I was 16 before. Now I'm just below 15. And if it got down to 14. I mean, really, I know this probably isn't perhaps exactly the answering the question <laughs> at all. But I wanted to talk about it anyway. The I'm quite pleased because I weighed myself a couple of days ago and it's just like, wow. Because I knew I'd be, I knew I was losing. I managed to lose some weight because I was about fifteen and a quarter, between fifteen and a quarter, fifteen and a half stone. Last time I weighed myself, and I did feel that, yeah, I think I've lost some weight. I do think I have, but it's it's hard to tell because it's I don't know. Just I think I have. And then when I weighed myself, and I actually really had, because that's quite a bit of, you know, it's half a stone. Um, 
fifth half quarter fifteen fifteen and a half yeah because I was sixteen to start with any anyway I've lost weight that's the main thing that's what I'm saying and perhaps by Christmas I might be down to fourteen stone. But I don't care what I weigh. It's to me, I don't really not. It's not about the weight. It's about the reducing the. Just you know, is it BMI? Well, for me, actually, for me, it was BIM. That that's what the doctor said. I said, "Isn't it BMI?" He said, "No, with you, it's BIM." I said, "What do you mean?" He says, "It's blimey, I'm fat," which is rude. Uh, but it's uh, BMI, blood. I don't know what it's what it stands for. So that's c kind of what I need to look at. I mean, I don't know what the healthy, because if it's it's going to be different at my age, isn't it? Is it kind of works different differently because when I was I don't know, let's say thirty, my weight and my I guess it's natural to have a higher, a different type of body at 50 than when you're 30. But at the same time, when I was 30, I probably would have been able to carry 16 stone. Easier maybe, but it's, I don't know, it's weird, because I remember when I hit 14 stone, and I was probably 40, 39, 40 maybe. And I felt huge. I felt like an elephant. I felt so big. I felt unwell, really. Felt really unwell with it. And like I was going to pop. And then roll on a few years and I'm two stone heavier than that. And I felt fine weird it's a really weird thing I kind of grew into the fat so now as I'm losing that purposefully you know doing I'm, I'm to do gentle exercise because I overdid it a while back a few weeks back and hurt my back so now I'm I'm just doing still doing weights but I'm doing gentle I'm not overdoing it, if you know what I mean. Because uh, before I, <laughs> I was doing exercise like four times a day, weight doing weights and stuff like that, and I'm just now it's just once a day, and don't you know just gradually ease into it, especially after you know injuring my back or whatever I did to it. Overused it, maybe. So, I'm going to pretend that I can eat anything I want. So, what I would probably say, thinking about previous meals, like I love a, I love a nice roast dinner. So, I'm going to move away from takeaway food. Just, as we're going to say, what's your favourite meal? My favourite meal probably is Christmas dinner. I like the variety. I quite like the the different things that are available. Uh, I also, which I know, I don't think um, necessary. Well, I, th I don't know what other people have, but I haven't had too many roast dinners where mashed potatoes also served. But I'm a mashed potato lover. Oh, I do. I love mashed potato haven't had any for a long time but I do love mashed potato so but I also love roast potatoes and I, so I love like the, having both I like vegetables as well so my favorite vegetable apart from to, um, potato would be but even boiled potatoes can be nice if they're, you know, seasoned and that. I mean, I don't really. If I was to cook something for myself, there's no seasoning, there's no, there's no salt, there's no anything, no salt, pepper. 
it's just all I suppose the correct term is bland <laughs> but you know some potato some vegetables taste okay actually if you don't overboil them like uh, carrots for example they they can be quite nice I tell you what I do like though I was talking about this the other day to someone I think they were uh, what was it what are they called humans yeah there's this human person uh, they're walking their dog and pars not pars yeah parsnips I was thinking parsley parsnips we were talking about roast dinners or I was talking about roast dinners and I said to her do you like parsnips she said no I said oh, I love parsnips especially sometimes they can if they're glazed and they're in the oven they they taste better than your um like roasted potatoes and she looked like she wanted to get away uh, like she's like in a hurry to leave I said you should try them and she said I just say good morning to you I didn't want to talk about parsnips, roast dinners, anything like that, especially not Christmas dinner. We're still in August. Why? I was like, okay, behind me. Just being friendly. She said, no, there's, there's, there's friendly and there's, there's oversharing. <laughs> I am an oversharer. I think that's been established. I think it's, I don't know. Is oversharing a bad thing? I've just been listening to an audio... Well, it's a, it's a Kindle book on bipolar. And this person's saying about how to overshare. And I'm thinking, huh? Maybe... Because I'm not one of those... I'm, I think I'm the opposite to stoic or stoic those uh, silent silent strong types I'm a I'm a chatty weak one I think that's probably what I am and I think as I was younger when I was younger you know I'd get criticised and judged and told off and you know all that stuff but now at my age no one can really do anything I can't really say anything because I'm not being I'm never not rude to anyone and it's it's a weird weird kind of place to be because I remember when I was what a teenager even early 20s the amount of older people that would talk down to me and I'd be sitting there listening to them and thinking why am I sitting here listening to you and there was times when I actually believed that I didn't like my my opinions and my thoughts weren't actually worth anything they didn't they they, they were pointless they they don't you know like my opinion had no validity at all And then I realised that maybe theirs didn't <laughs> at one point as I got older. But then maybe maybe my 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 thoughts and the things I had to say maybe I is just as equal to what they're saying. Maybe. And then I got even older and I realised that none of it really matters <laughs> it's just opinions opinions are not that important uh, they they seem important to the individuals but the amount of people that get into arguments and worse over an opinion you've only got to go onto Facebook and Twitter to see that over an opinion that's why I don't think I've noticed over the last 20 odd years I've made it quite a quite a commitment to tr 
trying to reduce or notice my opinions and to reduce or get rid of or at least soften soften any hard line kind of thinking any potentially extreme uh, when I say ex extreme just any horrible stuff you know oh everyone sh this should be this and they should be doing this and they should be allowed in and they should all be doing that and they blah, 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 you know all that stuff because I noticed that whenever I s I've had those conversations or someone's had the conversation with me especially when it comes to uh, sexuality, race um, just I'm trying to think what's the other one um, sex but it comes to between a difference between men and women and uh, children and adults and all, all the different things like that just when someone's being like really hard line whichever angle they're coming from it doesn't it's not very pleasant it just doesn't I don't I don't get a good vibe that's what I'm saying that's what I'm trying to say I don't get a good vibe from them because it something has been tapped into and I do wonder how much of that is them or is it a parent that had that opinion when they were growing up and now they're in their 60s and they're still thinking that without actually without any kind of introspection I don't know because you know I could have been a proper full on full on bigot to be honest I could have done grew up in the 70s the 70s in England was not the most open minded space to be it really wasn't it was you know you think all the adults had gone through they'd like not all the adults but even the young adults around about my dad's age you know people that were 20 30 years older than me so many of them were anti things anti anti you know really like don't like that don't like that don't like them don't like what they're doing they shouldn't be doing this and I'm surprised that I didn't end up like that I think I went the other way because they're human beings we're dealing with human beings and I never really understood why yeah it's just straight I know I'm perhaps going off in a different direction but which is un, un, unlike me of course but I never understood you know I remember I lived in a little town I lived in lots of different places when I was a kid well as an adult as well but you know as a kid North London then Newcastle then Southend then Suffolk so I lived in different places. The The amount of prejudice that I experienced towards, not towards me, but towards other people when I was living in the little towns where there was almost no reason for them to be prejudiced in the sense of, for example, if... Let's give an example. Let's say they didn't like helicopters right the locals didn't like helicopters they really had an issue of helicopters but there was hardly in, there was there's like one or two helicopters in the whole town it's rare you know thousands of planes maybe 50,000 planes and maybe 16 helicopters and the planes had an issue with the helicopters even though oh, <laughs> we do helicopters and planes 
you know, I just it's a nice way to say it, I think. But then every helicopter I met, I got on with them. Didn't get with, I didn't get on with all the planes though. And that's what I noticed. It's like you know, I just I kind of it dawned on me one day that I've never had an issue with a helicopter. But I've had lots of issues with planes. So why am I going to dislike a helicopter over the planes? So my favourite meal... <laughs> oh my goodness. My favourite meal... I'll tell you, here we're going to do it. Okay, here's what I would do. Is a roast dinner... That's one of my favourite meals, a roast dinner. And it would be... This is going back, so yeah, I'd like... It'd be everything. Yorkshire puddings. Uh, although I'm pretty much almost a vegetarian these days, but... It'd be a mixture of lots, lots of different things. So it'd be like Christmas dinner, any vegetable I wanted, including sweet corn. I love sweet corn. That's something that's I don't see offered particularly often in a roast dinner. I want a roast dinner now. Sweet corn. And then um, Yorkshire puddings, as many as I can eat. So just just have loads there. I love Yorkshire puddings. Roast potatoes, mashed potatoes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Love Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts, Vinny. Love Brussels sprouts. And what else? Lee, beep, 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 beep. Uh, gravy. Yes, yeah, sausage, sausages with bacon wrapped round. Uh, again, I probably would not be allowed to eat that anymore. Um, what's this? Stuffing. Oh, stuffing, of course. And... I think even bread, is it bread and butter pudding? A bread and butter, what is it? That stuff you can have that's quite nice that goes with a... I think some people have it on beef. Uh, what else would there be? Uh, what's that? What's that? Purple stuff. Not chutney. Uh, it's a. It's kind of a Christmassy thing. Uh, I forget, but it's and that's really nice as well. Like jelly jam, kind of. Yeah, that's nice. Why are you staring at me, Vinny? No, you want your dinner, don't you? Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my dear. I don't have... I can't give you... I'm doing this, I'm working. Working? It's not working, is it? I know it's not working, but I'm doing something. <laughs> at least I'm trying to do something. Um, so that would be one. Another thing I haven't had for years. So what I used to like to do. I used to like to go into the Wimpy, quarter panda with chips and a milkshake. That used to be one of my favourite things to, to, to do. I go in there probably once a week for, for a few years, well, for a while, when I lived in town. I haven't lived in town for 10 years now. It, it was better when I was younger because I noticed as I got older I was getting more and more bloated. <laughs> Perhaps was probably because I was eating five burgers. But, you know, I used to like a lovely quarter pounder with chips. That was nice. Quarter pounder with cheese and chips. McDonald's I used to love. 
quarter pound of cheese McDonald's, you know, with McDonald's when I was a teenager. And then, I mean, I just loved them. There was just, it was like the most, my favourite thing to eat when I was like 16, 17, 18, 19. And I, even when I was in my 20s, I used to go to McDonald's probably once a week if I could get to the West End and just have a, you know, a quarter pound of chips or a quarter, quarter pound of meal, for a quarter pound of cheese meal with a milkshake. But, and it was, to be fair, you know, in the West End, you got, you can got lots of different things you can eat, but it's very busy. And it's also not cheap. McDonald's was a, a cheap meal. It's not so cheap these days, but back then, a few quid and you, you know, so it was all right. Now, I think you're looking at nearly £10 for a, a McDonald's meal these days. So, but there was another meal I really like, and it was tapas, a Spanish, in a Spanish restaurant, tapas, I like that. But I think I'm hungry, that's what it is, I'm really, I'm really, really hungry. And I know that all I've got to eat is going to be salad and rice cakes and some hummus. And I know that I'm hungry, but I'm not looking forward to eating it because just because, because, because. It'd be really nice if, you know, if you started dieting, started to, you know, you know I can't eat healthy now. I'm going to try and get the cal the calories down and all that. And you do it. And as soon as you start eating the healthy food, all the weight drops off that you want to want to go. The body goes to exactly how you want it to be. The fat level, the... BIM, uh, the sugar, blood sugar level, or cholesterol, everything goes to exactly how you want it to be. As soon as you start eating. And it stays that way, providing you stick to the diet. You know, so it would be like incentive straight away. It's like you go to the gym once and your body's transformed instantly to... The, bo the kind of body you want to have, uh, whether it's muscular or whatever, athletic or whatever you want to be. But then if you stop going to the gym, and if you go more than a month without going to the gym, your body just goes back to how it was. For, you know, I think that would just be much easier, obviously. But it would be an easy way to keep a diet, wouldn't it? Do you imagine it's like, I'm going to have a salad and when I finish this salad in five minutes time I will be two stone lighter and I will be slim, trim and even my beard will be nicely shaped for some reason. I'll have more hair on my head. It's like perfect. I'd eat the salad, wouldn't you? Like, yeah. In fact, I might even look forward. To, in fact, I might even stop this recording to go and have the salad. You know, I might have already had the salad. I might have eaten the salad yesterday. That's what we need. We need the equivalent of that Willy Wonka chewing gum. The equivalent, the opposite to it, rather. Because you remember they had the chewing gum and the kid ate it. Is it the little girl, wasn't it? That ate it. Or was it the little boy? And they weren't little anymore because they just blew up and became a, a big blue raspberry kind of thing. And they had to be juiced, isn't it? Isn't it? We said, let's go and juice, juice him or juicer. 
but the opposite to that. So you'd have you'd have the thing and you'd be eating it, and I'd so I'd start eating it. Oh, chewing gum, yeah, that lovely. What does it taste of? It tastes of lettuce. I could taste lettuce. I could taste spring onions. Oh, I could taste tomato. Cucumber. Celery. Who the heck's... You no one eats celery. It's, it's a garnish. You don't eat it. Celery. I used to grow it in school. Celery. Oh. But as you say in it, we've discussed... You start to slim. It's like, oh, mind you, if the chewing gum, it'd be like, how, mm. even if it was just chewing gum, I don't know if I'd want to eat it or chew it, because like, oh, do you want some more chewing gum? Because you remember, it just it toned you right down straight away, made you healthiest you've been in years. Yeah, but you got a different flavour. Well, I got the uh, Big Mac flavour, but unfortunately, it has a different effect on your body. But it tastes like a Big Mac. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it's got a different effect on your body. Like you've got the salad flavour; it's made you slimmer, and it, it might uh, elongate your life. But you said you've got a a, a Big Mac flavour. Yeah. You're not quite grasping what I'm saying here. What other flavours have you got? Um, we've got the hummus flavour. <laughs> no, can't be serious. What, what other flavours have you got? So, well, Burger King. We've got the Burger King flavour. Yeah, really? What, you got curry flavour? Got curry flavour, yeah. But it's, it's, it's not just curry. It is the Indian takeaway flavour. In fact, it's like everything is is a combination of any anything that's on the menu really i said ah okay so can't you have a mcdonald's flavor instead of just a big mac flavor and he said no because uh they wanted too much money they 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 didn't want to really get involved with us is uh, we'd have to go to each franchise, and everyone's got their own opinions, and they didn't, they weren't on board for this because there's no money in it. What do you mean? Well, you eat food. People going to McDonald's, and it's about the experience and that. But just chewing gum, they didn't like the idea. Really. Plus, you know, one of the things any restaurant or fast food place doesn't like is the amount of gum that's put underneath the table in the restaurants you know it's it's a it's not a popular thing for the staff to have to deal with no okay by the way are you going to actually talk about the questions yet been yeah i am talking about the questions i am what is my favorite meal uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to fit in a restaurant. Probably, I still seem to go for pizza when I go into a restaurant. I did have one of those, I forget the name of it, Panicheni or something, Panchui, Pan, Panelaheli, I, I don't know. And I thought, this sounds good. But it's basically just a, a pizza in half like rolled over a pizza sandwich it's it's a pizza yeah but it's it's just a pizza rolled over almost like a kind of like a flat cornish pasty but with pizza so yeah i'd probably say roast dinner i mean for a takeaway sweet corn pineapple pizza I do like uh, KFC occasionally. That used to be one of my favourite things back in 2011 because I went through a year where all I, I didn't cook anything at all. 
I think I did. I cooked one meal. So the rest of the year, I ate sandwiches. So I have sandwiches during the day, and I have sandwiches in the evening. Take them home. It's from Greg's. So that was a year of doing that. What I did do though on a Sunday is I'd walk up to KFC and on Saturday evening sometimes I'd have a pizza delivered as well. But Sunday afternoon, walk up to KFC, get a big old they used to have these platters where it would be quarter pound I don't know, uh chicken I think four pieces of chicken and beans, sweet corn, popcorn chicken, fries and a drink for like 10 quid or 11, 12 pound, 10 pound, I don't know. So I used to get that quite regularly. Come home and just pig out and it was lovely. Because it was like the only cooked meal really I was having in the, in the week. So it was nice. I don't know why I didn't just go and eat something cooked. Could have gone to a cafe but I just never did. Um, so that was that was my favourite meal anyway probably going to go roast dinner I'd say but takeaway is a different thing it depends but I do like Indian food to a degree I do like the naan bread that's my favourite thing and I do like the what's it um, Papa Don's and I do like the different sauces, all the different sauces they have, they're nice. But everything else needs to be, I do like this, the rice, some of the rice, but I'm not a big spicy hot person, I'm not into that. So yeah, not so much. Chinese, I like the sweet and sour stuff. I'm not so much. Why do you keep blobbling your head, Vinny? You're listening, aren't you? Just give me cuddles. He's, he's cuddling up to me. He's been quite... Um, I've noticed this a lot more over... Over time, he's got more affectionate with me. Haven't you, Vin? Got more affectionate. He cuddles with me a lot more than he used to. And I quite like it. I like it. We do like it. We have a, like, a little cuddle, don't we? Eh? Yes, we do. We love having a cuddle together. It's, it's me and you, isn't it? Eh, Vin? I literally, he's just laying down over my leg. And he's just on his one side and he's just I'm stroking his chest. He's, he's a happy little boy, aren't you? I think he's hungry, though, as I am. Is you hungry, Vin? Is you a hungry baby? Is you a hungry baby? Yes, you is. Yes, you is. You are a hungry one. A hungry one. Yeah. Oh, Vinny, he loves... Cause he, he, he shares my dinner with me as well. He has his own food, but I always share what I have. He doesn't share his. And... I had some rice last night. Rice with... Uh, tuna fish and he loved it honestly but he also loves a roast dinner you eat vegetables he, he likes veg he does like the gravy as well I like gravy I don't like thick gravy I like it nice and nice and thin nice and runny like liquid should be really shouldn't it or liquid should be runny uh, and maybe even tomato sauce not a big fan of brown sauce really not even on breakfasts not that I have fried breakfast anymore I mean I actually a few weeks ago those that listen every time you may remember this but I was getting all excited that I bought some vegetarian sausages I had some eggs some beans and I was going to make myself a not a fried breakfast but just like a, a cooked breakfast I'm gonna cook it in the grill and poach the eggs, do the beans in a microwave. So I was looking forward to that. 
a couple of bits of toast, a cup of tea. Well, when I finished the recording on that particular evening, or early, late afternoon or whatever, I did that and I, I had the worst heartburn that I had for ages. And I don't know if it's I just stuffed it down or it was, I think it might have just been too much because I overloaded myself with food. Because normally I don't I don't eat much in a sitting. I never have really been a big eater like my whole life. I've never um I don't necessarily like to leave food. I haven't got to worry too much now. I've got this little one because he'll help me eat it. But I don't, I can't, yeah, occasionally I will. Like, a, but I know there's some people that will eat every single thing off of the plate. And I generally don't do that. If it's a cooked meal, uh, yeah, I, I just... I'm not a big eater. Ne never have been a big eater. I've been a, I've been a someone eating that's big, <laughs> but I've never been a big eater. So the next one is about wife swapping. No, swapping. Did how I just looked at the thing. How did you swap from going to sleep in the late hours of the night, early mornings? Okay. How did you swap from going to sleep in the late hours of the night, early hours of the morning? And sleeping during the daytime um, to go to sleep early in the evenings waking up early I very badly need to switch around my sleep schedule 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 from staying up all night and sleeping all day to going to bed earlier and waking up earlier and I am, am having a lot of trouble with it thank you um, that's also from Nicole well let me think I would say I used to see it it partly changed it was too f see I never used to be an awake all night but I used to be a late person did you hear that? that's my stomach I used to go to bed late so I, you know, for many years, I would go to bed early hours of the morning, generally like one o'clock, two. But I wouldn't normally go to bed less, but before one o'clock. And then I don't know because I moved here, and I don't know when it happened. It might have been more strategic because I wanted to be able to make recordings and I was struggling to get enough quiet to do them during the day because a lot of lot of background sound I didn't have uh, the equipment it's all has been my excuse in a lot of different scenarios just don't have the correct equipment tell me about it and um, I, yeah, and, and it's, it's not just, so even if you can't hear the background sounds, because it's, you know, it's a better microphone, it's a better setup than it used to be, I can hear the background sounds, and it does distract me sometimes. And uh, there's been times when I've done a recording, and in the end I've just ditched the recording, because it's, it's a little bit frustrating. And then listen back to the recording, and you can hardly hear a thing from the background sound. It's just, and and if with background music, it's pretty much gone. But I can hear it, and it just annoys me sometimes. Yeah, most of the time I'm okay, but occasionally it's like, oh, just, just, yeah. So, what was the what was the question? I'm gonna have to look again. Oh yeah, my my the way I changed my sleeping. I didn't do it on purpose. So, I went from going to bed like one o'clock in the morning, 
they're waking up probably nine o'clock, ten o'clock uh, in the morning to it just happened gradually. I don't think anything particularly happened for it to happen. It prob I imagine it it started in the winter and I would I started to be up all night. So instead of going to bed at one I'd be going to bed later and later. So it'd be two o'clock in the morning. Then sometimes it'd be three o'clock in the morning. And then I got to the point where I'd be going to bed at four o'clock. And then I started listening to a uh, LBC radio show that started at four and ended at seven. I started listening to that in the morning. And then going to bed after that finished, about seven o'clock. And that's when I was fully into the sleeping during the day and during the night I would work on the podcasts I'd make some podcasts but I'd also be working them on the admin admin side of things and it suited me at the time I had Andre I had Andre living with me and you know it's just you know I wouldn't be getting up late late Anyway, so I go to bed at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. I'll be up by 2 o'clock. So I'd still have like 2 all the way through till 7. You know, still quite a long time to be awake during the day. Still be awake most of the day. Just, uh, it's just the afternoon. It's just the morning bit I'd miss. And so what happened is... I went to Cornwall 2022 no 2021 it was in the summer and my friend invited me to go on holiday with her and her boyfriend and her mum and her dog so I went along we were gone for about five days five or six days something like that and we were staying in this house it was a three bedroom house like a holiday home thing but because they didn't live my lifestyle they were just living hey come on mate good boy they were going to bed well they were going to bed in the evening and waking up in the morning so what I did is I I couldn't stay up all night because they were doing stuff during the day, expected me to do stuff during the day. And my whole um my whole kind of calendar kind of changed from then on, but it still didn't change completely cuz so I was getting up at about 6 o'clock in the morning. And they were moaning that I was up too early, making too much noise, even though I was really creeping around, trying to be quiet. But I wasn't so familiar with the... Okay, I was on a drum kit. <laughs> but, you know, it's she was annoying me, so... No, she was. I didn't have a drum kit. But she did complain about me. Like, can you get up a little later? I said, well... I get up when I wake up, I'm in a room, there's nothing in there, none of my stuff. I have to go to the toilet, which means leaving the room, and when I wake up, what am I supposed to do? Just sit in silence until you all get out of bed. I don't live like that. And no, I just didn't know what to do really. But anyway, I, used to, I was waking up early, I was going to bed early, partly because they were watching television stuff that I didn't want to watch I have no internet for most of the time there because uh, they couldn't get hold of the internet and the the Wi-Fi was terrible on my own thing so I was trying to use the phone 
so that was just because of where we were we were in the middle of nowhere and it's very lovely but it's just really out of the way anyway so I had nothing to do really I kind of like I didn't want to watch telly because I watch this stuff I didn't want to watch and I'm used to being on my own I'm used to watching my own TV when I want what I want it's, I don't know, I know it's a selfish way to be probably, but it's just what I'm used to. So I was going to bed early, like 8 o'clock. Good night everyone. You going to bed already? That was that was her boyfriend. Uh, I said, yeah. She said, uh, and she said, really? Why are, you, why are you going to bed so early for? I said, uh, just, just for, you know, like, what's it got to do with you while I'm going to bed? I'm an adult. I'm 50 one years old if I want to go to bed I go to bed and I slam the door because <laughs> I'm an adult no I didn't slam the door anyway I that's what happened what are you doing Vinny he wants to play you get a bit rough mate you've been a bit rough calm down calm down good boy good boy so he so yeah I kind of got into that and after about six days I kind of got used to being up during the day and being in bed during the night and when I got home I kind of still went back to being up half the night but it wasn't the same anymore I was I was in bed by four in the morning so I went back to my old routine, but I couldn't stay up till seven anymore. I just couldn't do it. It's like that had changed. And I was going to bed about three, sometimes three o'clock in the morning, sometimes four, but I noticed that I was struggling to be awake still at four. And I was missing the radio show because it was actually, I was going to bed as it started. And then I went to Thailand for a short while and because it's the complete opposite time wise I I just it it changed my clock changed it, it sort of changed my internal clock so when I got home I was I was going to bed at night waking up early in the morning and it's been like that ever since but I think I was moving towards that anyway because there's been times when I've been you know I've gone to bed at 8, 9 in the morning in the evening, got up early it's you know sometimes I go to bed at 7 if because I've noticed that's quite a good thing for me to do if I'm not in the best uh, the best state of mind sometimes it's better that I just go to bed than sit here starting to delete stuff <laughs> uh, which I've done in the past like websites and podcasts and things like that so it's better for me to just move away from everything and just go to bed and sometimes that's all I need to do and I'll wake up at maybe 9 o'clock, maybe 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then I'll wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning and I can start a new day. So yeah. So that's kind of how I did it. It wasn't really... You can kind of do it gradually. I think we just get used to stuff. Well, I, I, I talk for myself. I get used to a certain routine and... I just seem to become accustomed to it. So going to bed at three, four o'clock. No, getting up, sorry, about... I don't wake up every day at four in the morning. Sometimes I wake up at six in the morning. It really does depend. And I don't go to bed early, early every night. Sometimes I'm, I go to bed at 11. There's been times I go to bed at midnight. Sometimes even one in the morning if boxing's on at the weekend um, but then there's other times when I wake up I go to bed at 8 and I'm up at 2 
because boxing's on in America and I want to watch it. So, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, and then I have to sleep during the day because I'm so tired. So tired. So tired. Yes. Tired. Um, I hope that answered your question. I don't think it was very helpful though. Sorry. Uh, I probably didn't help, but I think it's about maybe sometimes making small changes. And what I've noticed is if I'm in bed and I don't want to be in bed, I just stay in bed. You know, so if I go to bed early, let's say 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and I wake up at 11 or 12 and I'm awake. In the past, I used to just get up. Now I don't. I just stay in bed. And... I fall asleep again it's not I don't try and like force myself to fall asleep because I don't I'm not into that I just uh, you know if, even if I turn a radio on or listen to an audio book or listen to some music or something but generally I once I fall asleep that's it usually till about four or five so when I go to bed early sometimes I do wake up after a few hours and it's still before 12 uh, so in the past as I said like a few years back I would have got up like well uh, just whenever I felt awake I'd get up but now I just allow myself the rest even if I'm not like hugely tired I'll go and sleep or lay down So I hope that answered the question anyway. Even if it wasn't useful, it's still answered. So Cindy asks, what's the biggest challenge you have faced as a podcaster and how did you overcome it? Ooh, wow, okay. There's been a few, not necessarily to do with the podcast itself, but during a period as a podcaster, because I started podcasting in... What are you doing? What are you grounded for? Oh, shush started podcasting like 2006 so I would say well, I started making recordings anyway 2006 audio recordings I used to upload them to MySpace then 2007 that's when I think I got my first actual podcast podcast the first things that problems I had was finding somewhere quiet to make the recordings uh, the equipment was an issue I struggled with the editing you know the whole thing was it wasn't easy in a sense of I had to I didn't have to but I decided to accept the, the quality as far as the recording quality was not going to be very good but hopefully the the content quality was okay and that seemed to be the case for quite a while now it's the other way around <laughs> so I the first real issue was when I lost about half of my recordings if not more I lost at least 100 or 200 recordings in I think it was 2009 yeah, maybe 2010, but I think it was 2009. And the podcast I've been using for a few years just deleted loads of my recordings. And I didn't have them backed up or saved, that is. So I had some of them backed up, but I lost a lot of them. So that was a, a big hurdle what was the question? What's the biggest challenge? That was a challenge. A lot of my challenge, my own, it's been my self-sabotage, to be honest. I've been a self-sabotager for quite a, quite a few times. Uh, when my YouTube channel was going really, really well, like, I was starting to really see the, the difference. Uh, I deleted the channel. 
it was, there was no reason for it. I just had a, a brain fart, whatever you want to call it, mood swing, and it was uh, it was a very strange, strange situation, but something that I'd worked so long on, so many years to build up, and finally, well, not finally. I mean, it started to pick up in two thousand and eleven. So I started the channel in 2007, started to pick up 2011, had my first like 100,000 plays on a video, on one video. So I was really pleased with that. And then every video I delete, that I released was getting good, good views. I mean, yeah, it was, it was, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't getting millions, but it was getting, you know, it was going well. And I was getting more and more subscribers every day. It was just growing. Exponentially, I guess, is the correct word. And then in 2013, I deleted it. So it was going, it was going well. It really was. Uh, I reckon, yeah. I may, may well have had quite a lot of subscribers by now. You think 11 years later, I probably, I think I had about three, three and a half thousand subscribers. So it wasn't a huge subscribers, but a lot of people that were subscribed were actually watching. So I wouldn't be surprised if I had a hundred, couple of hundred thousand subscribers, maybe even more by now. After 11 years, if it, if I continue to grow it, maybe even half a million. Who knows? It's anything's possible, I guess. But there you go. That is, I realise that that's a video thing, not a podcast thing. But I kind of class it all as the same. It's all in the same ballpark, really. Especially as usually the videos and the podcasts were the same. So I, I would make a video and then convert it into an audio for a podcast. Now I'm doing the opposite. I'm making audios and convert them into videos for YouTube. Another thing would be... Yeah, my own... I said... The, the bipolar, that's definitely had a big... It's been challenging because... I have deleted stuff so many times, deleted podcasts, deleted websites that I've spent hundreds of hours building and then lost because I, del I pressed the delete button and even the website companies couldn't get them back. Sometimes I could get stuff back, you know, the, the amount of times I've deleted Facebook, Twitter, I lost Twitter actually by deleting it. I forgot that I forgot I deleted it, and you get I think thirty days to cancel a deletion, and so I lost my Twitter account. I've been trying to get it back for a couple of years, and then I'm just like, it's gone, isn't it? That's why it's gone because I deleted it, and so I haven't done that for years, and well for quite a while. And with a Facebook, I can't do it now because of the Facebook group. If I delete my Facebook page then I think I don't know what would happen to the group I mean maybe it's still carry on maybe I don't need to be on it but yeah so I, I, anyway I don't do that now so, yeah the other thing would probably be a couple of years ago was it a couple of years or was it last year a couple of years ago the the, the podcast host I was using told me you can't have music but because I, I used to have the recordings just the original recordings of the podcast then I would do the versions with with background music then I'd do a version 5 hour and 10 hour but it would just be the recording and then music for, for 5 hours or 10 hours no other background talking or uh, counting down or body scans or any of the stuff that I do now so I had to delete every, you know a 
big, big, big chunk of my podcasts and then redo everything. So that was a hurdle. That was a few years back. And then last year, they did this, exactly the same thing, but this time they said no music at all. And I didn't have enough time to delete what they needed me to delete because there was so much. Thousands of recordings, multiple podcasts, and I lost a lot of stuff. Not only did, so I wasn't able to download it because I didn't have it backed up because I didn't learn <laughs> that's why it's even now I'm not necessarily backing stuff up which I should be it's just it's 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 quite hard to know where to store it because it really does take up a lot of space the podcast it takes up a huge amount of space I've got one two three hard drives as well as the hard the, the hard drive on the laptop and the space on the iPad uh, as well as the uh, what is it Apple Cloud I know iCloud iCloud where well, is the Apple Cloud isn't it iCloud so yeah, this is it's difficult to try and I'm, I'm trying to get everything organized and keep everything in one place. And I've got the videos on one hard drive, I've got the audios on a different hard drive, and I've tried to organize and save as much stuff as possible. But over the years, I have lost hundreds and hundreds of recordings and hundreds of videos over the years. There's so much stuff that I've lost. Because there was times when I would say I was fairly prolific. You know, I'd do multiple recordings in a day sometimes. So, the last challenge really was that one, regarding podcasts, although Yeah, it would be because ever since that happened last year, I think it, I don't know what time it was. Ever since that happened, and I started to, I had to turn, I had to change over to SoundCloud. The stats have gone down because the I just I can't. I kind of, yeah, to have podcasts with music like I do on SoundCloud, but to have each podcast separately with music. So, you know, to have all the stuff on there that I used to have, I just can't afford to have that many different podcasts. And it's, it's a weird one, hard to explain, but it's... The sound, I mean, I've got two podcasts now on SoundCloud one that has all my stuff on and one that's for the Let Me Boy to Sleep I've also gone back to Spreaker but I've now been making recordings where they're without music so they're like uh, 5 and 10 hours but without music just talking about music so I've been working on that but ultimately, it's like, oh, just constantly giving myself more work. So anyway, there's been a few challenges, uh, Cindy. Thank you. Christine asks, what was Dooley for in Andre Dooley Newland, please? Thanks, JJ. Love to Vin. He's now licking the bottom of my foot. Oh, I like that. Is that wrong? <laughs> I really do like it. Uh, um, I okay so the reason why I'll go back a little bit I called you know Andre my little Andre the ferret 
He was called Andre after one of our best one of my best friends in the past, Andre. So he was called Yeah. So he was called I called him on because my friend was called Andre Dooley. That was his name. So uh, I called Andre my Andre Andre Dooley Newland. So he had my surname, but he had Andre and he had Dooley in the middle because that was Andre. And although we kind of we were really close in the nineties and I hadn't seen him for a long time, and he he he's not all around anymore, unfortunately. But he would be among the closest friends I've ever had in my life. You know, my whole life. One of the closest friends I've had. No, it's not many. There's really a handful of people that I've been super close to. And he's one of them. So I found out just before I got Andre, my, my ferret Andre, that he'd passed away. So it was kind of a tribute. And also because... The, the nickname that Andre, the original Andre, used to have was called was uh, Little Legs or No Legs. So No Legs, that's what they used to call him. Saying that he had little legs and he was really short, even though he was my height. So they called him No Legs and my little Andre, the ferret, tiny little legs. So it just seemed correct. So to to as a tribute to Andre call my little boy Andre and just have the Dooley new land like Vinny is now Vinny Andre Dooley new land I usually say Vinny Andre new land but I probably would say Vinny Andre Dooley new land it's like it's two middle names would be Andre Dooley Mind you, if I'd have got him this year, I'm pretty sure he'd have a different name. A different middle name. But I'd already called him Andre, uh, Vinny, like Vinny, I've already called him Vinny Andre Newland. So I'm not going to change it. But, I mean, is it, I don't think it's disrespectful to name a pet after a human, is it? Someone that you care about? I don't think so but yeah not that he's a pet he's my little boy he's my son this one so is Andre so that's why really it's the uh, Dooley was Andre's surname and Andre Dooley Newland because he had to have my surname didn't he because he was my son that's it really <laughs> oh blimey this is going to be a really short recording I've hardly talked to all of her Jenny says, asks, do you like art? If so, what style artist do you like most? I need to listen to Q&A Fridays during the day so I don't fall asleep and miss the answers. Well, Jenny, I should have answered yours first, shouldn't I? Um, then you'd have heard it. I don't know how long we've been talking for. So, do I like art? It depends what your classes are. I mean, if if you mean art as in paintings, I don't dislike art, and I've been in probably a lot of the main art galleries in London multiple times over the years, and it's beautiful stuff. You know, it's it's hard to deny the fact of how how amazing those artists were uh, back in you know hundreds and hundreds of years ago the some of the arts I don't know if I always kind of understand the art I know it, it can be a, a personal thing anyway but I'm not really into art as far as I mean for me I was actually having this similar conversation with a lady uh, who was talking about how she like to paint and 
do an artistic thing. And I said, yeah, I'm artistic. And she said, don't you mean autistic? Which I thought was rude. She she laughed and I said, no. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, but artistic. I like to think that what I do is art in a weird kind of a way. Because literature is art, isn't it? Writing is an uh, an art form. I mean, it's not painting, but you kind of paint in a picture maybe with words and maybe... I'm kind of doing that in a weird way. Um, I think the speaking, not not everybody would want to, but not everybody would be able to talk for an hour or an hour and a half or two hours, just sit and talk into a microphone and have it to be such great quality content as me. <laughs> God, anyone could do this, really. Just talk rubbish for an hour. Uh, it's not hard. But not everybody. It wouldn't suit everybody. This is perfect for me. And I like to think that what I do is kind of art. But do I like art? Yeah. I, I don't... Because I... I was never much good though, that's the thing. The reason I didn't get, cause I, I'm interested in things that I can do, or at least something that I might have been good at. So, like with boxing, I love boxing. I've done, bo I've trained in a boxing gym. Not, I was too old to spar, but I did train for a year or two or whatever it was when I was at college. And, I think I might have been if I'd had the opportunity when I was younger I think I'd have been acceptable I think I'd have been alright I think but you know and I know some people might say what do you mean if you'd had the chance or the opportunity just turn up at a gym well that is what I did when I was 20 turned up at a gym in London East London I was 20 I mean I was still that's young isn't it not not according to them they uh, I mean it's, okay it's a joke it's not like oh no this is a junior school go away you're too young no it was actually a, a proper boxing gym full time boxing gym very famous boxing gym actually world famous and they turned me away because I was too old they only wanted kids because that's what they were looking for to, to turn into future world champions or whatever. They wanted kids. And maybe they looked at me and thought, nah, skinny, skinny lad, big nose, what's he going to be able to do? Maybe that's what they looked, when they, that's all they saw when they walked in there. Not realizing that, well, I don't know. Who knows what I could have under the right circumstances I might have been okay I was definitely quite good at those kinds of things in the, in the past or adequate-ish so yeah uh, blimey what am I talking about yes yeah, so art I was rubbish okay maybe not rubbish but I I used to I used to love drawing and then I kind of realised that perhaps I wasn't very good. I thought I was doing really well and I don't know, something happened and I just thought, oh, it's not very good. And I kind of fell out of love with it. I used to spend hours drawing, whether it was birds, whether it was people, celebrities, out of magazines. I used to really love that. Just a, you know, pen and paper. And then I tried painting didn't like it don't like never like the feeling of paint on a paper I've tried painting by numbers uh, I've even bought all the equipment easel or, or like you know to really have a go at it and I thought it might be good for my mental health you know if I could try and paint my feelings and I ended up with this just big 
black cloud on a on a on a white surface and that was kind of it so yeah I don't know I just never really I wanted I struggled to be enthusiastic about it because I wasn't very good and I didn't really enjoy painting and I haven't even attempted to draw anything since I was a kid um, never really been a hands-on kind of person like my dad's brilliant with his hands he can cr pretty much build anything he's a bit like the 18 you know can build stuff out of nothing you bunch of junk in a warehouse and he'll come out with a <laughs> a bunch of junk all stuck together but you know that's besides the point it's you know it's 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 um I'd love to do an episode of the A team but make it realistic I really would um so I I did there used to be an art gallery above the comedy club and it was my friend, he actually, he, he, it was his art gallery. And it was basically the, the, the barman and his girlfriend or wife, I don't know if they were married, who was a waitress, they, they were both artists. And I think one of them was at university or he was just, and he was doing an art degree. And then he, he basically, he, a few years later my friend had the whole top floor as an art gallery for him and they took over and they ran it and uh, I went up there so every time they had a new exhibition I'd go up when there was no one around have a little look around there was only one that I really really liked that, that okay maybe one that I understood and it was a bunch of nudes and before you uh, <laughs> before you wonder oh yeah okay that's why you liked it no 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 what it was it it had all these scenarios uh, especially like of conflict like war and stuff like that like from the past people on horses in the battlefield you know um Battle of whatever, Waterloo, whatever it was, but everyone was naked, and it just showed the absurdity. It, it just changed the perspective of also how vulnerable human beings are. Really, you know, take off the armor and just like I'm naked is just. I don't know, it's hard to explain. I mean, we're going back to, you know, 2000, so it's 25 years ago or whatever. I just remember seeing it and thinking, oh. And then I went to the toilet and did a big poo. So, yeah. So, art. I would have loved to have been really, 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 really good at something. Always wanted to be good at something. And... Vinny's being very restless. Why are you being so restless, Vin? You want to? You want me to stop doing this now, don't you? Do you? You want to stop doing this? Why are you sticking? Don't stick your bum in my face. What are you doing? What do you want? What actually do you want? So, I'd have loved to. Yeah, I do like art. I mean, sculptures and stuff like that. I've known some artists over the years, and. Yeah, I just, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure if I'm clever enough to really understand it all. I don't know. It's, it's a hard one. Vinny, blimey, what are you doing? He's really restless now, so I'm going to have to bring this to an end because he wants my attention. He really wants my attention, don't you? Hey, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, Vin? What are you doing, baby? What are you doing? Why are you all over me now, suddenly, all of a sudden? Suddenly, all of a sudden. He wants to play. 
hasn't barked, has he, at all through this recording? That's good. You've been a good boy. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. You've been so good today. Yeah. Yes, you have, haven't you? He's good most of the time. It's just, you know, when he he barks suddenly out of the blue and it's so high-pitched. <laughs> it, it just gets my ears a little bit. So that's it. Ow, stop biting me. Are you that hungry that you're trying to eat my fingers? Sausage fingers. Sausage. They're not sausages, they're fingers. They look like sausages. Stop it. Stop being rude. So thank you for listening. Thank you for the questions. Remember to be kind to yourself. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love.